DIY smart door locks. Smart door locks are pretty pricey. The cheapest ones I could find were about $100, and those got pretty poor reviews. To get a good one, you can expect to pay well over $200. Making a DIY smart door lock is something I've wanted to do for a while. In this video, I'll show you how I made two different types of smart door locks that cost about $25 a piece. Ready, set, go. Thanks to the folks at Banggood who sent me these two magnetic locks to use. One is a surface mount magnetic lock and the other one is a strike plate lock. They both work differently. So which one is right for you is gonna to totally depend on your situation and how you wanna use it. One thing they both have in common is that they run on 12 volts. So for this project, you're going to need a source of 12 volt power. They draw somewhere between 150 and 250 milliamps. So pretty much any 12 volt power supply that you find laying around should work fine. One more thing, they both also work in fail safe mode. In this case, that means if the unit loses power, it will unlock. I read a few different forums about DIY smart locks, and there were a couple issues that people brought up a lot. The first is what happens in a fire. I'll say two things about that. Number one, we're gonna have a button that will activate or deactivate the lock. So if there's a fire and the power is still on in the house, you can just push the button and it'll unlock, no problem. And number two, if the house is on fire, and the power goes out, because the locks are fail safe, when the power's gone, the door will unlock. So once again, no problem. Another point that gets brought up when we're talking about do-it-yourself smart locks is the strength of the lock. That is, how much force can the lock withstand? As it turns out, deadbolts, like this one, have a grading system. Who knew? The most common standard deadbolt lock is a grade three. A grade three lock is made to withstand 150 pounds of force. There wasn't any information on the force rating for the strike lock, but the surface mount lock has a force rating of 64 kilograms, or about 140 pounds. That's close enough to being a grade three lock for me. And let's face it, if somebody really wants to kick down your door, they're gonna do it. A smart lock or a dumb lock won't stop them. Now these locks are electronic locks, but they're not smart by themselves. To make them more smarter, we need to add one more thing, a Sonoff. Thanks to W. Johnson, who had a recent chat with IT tech support and let me know that the intended pronunciation is actually S on off. I don't know if I can say it that way. So for these locks, the best option for adding some smartness is the S on off SV. This is the low voltage version of the basic. Now you could use the stock firmware, which is the eWeLink app, and it works perfectly fine. The setup is easy and the app is decent and out of the box, it'll communicate with Amazon Echo or Google Home. On the downside, it relies on a connection to the IT servers, and it doesn't provide a way to connect to your smart home hub, which hopefully you have already, or you will have soon. So as usual, I'm gonna replace the stock firmware with Tasmoda. And this time, I've got a special little surprise for you. Instead of using the Arduino IDE, I'm gonna show you how to use Flash ESP8266. Full credit here goes to my friend Pete Stuthers. He didn't invent it, but he put out the first video that I saw that explains where to get it and how to use it. If you haven't seen any of Pete's videos, go check them out. Flash ESP8266, which by the way needs a short catchy name, is actually made by the people who make ESP Easy. It's a simple little executable file that comes included in a zip file that you can download here. That zip file has several versions of ESP Easy included. Someday I'll try ESP Easy, but it is not this day. You can use Flash ESP8266 to load any binary or .bin file onto your Sonoff. I'm gonna use Tasmoda, so I go to the Tasmoda GitHub page and download Sonoff.bin. When you download the Sonoff.bin file, make sure it ends up in the same folder as Flash ESP8266. You're still gonna need a USB to serial adapter, and you need to get the board into programming mode. Once you have your USB adapter connected to your computer, and you're bored in programming mode, you can start Flash ESP8266. It should pop up with the COM port of your USB adapter. Then you just select the binary file that you want to load and hit Flash. After a couple minutes of loading, you'll have Tasmoda on your Sonoff, but you still have to do some things to finish setting it up. With Tasmoda, you can put the board in Wi-Fi manager mode by pressing the onboard button four times quickly. I honestly had a little trouble doing this. When I was pressing really fast, I would lose track of how many times I'd press. So if that happens to you, you're not alone. If you've done the four presses correctly, the LED on the board will start flashing rapidly. When you see that, go to your available Wi-Fi networks and find the one that says Sonoff blah blah blah. 
This time, just for something different, I did the whole setup on my phone. Once you've connected to that Sonoff Wi-Fi, you'll be able to put in your Wi-Fi SSID and password. Then the board will restart. Now you've got to go to your router and get the IP address of the Sonoff. Put that IP address in your browser and that'll open up the Tasmoda main page where we can do the rest of the setup. First thing to do will be to go to configuration, configure module, and change it from Sonoff Basic to Sonoff SV. Save and it restarts. Now go back to configuration and configure module and set GPIO 14 as switch one. Save, restart. Now go to configuration, configure MQTT, and then put the information from your MQTT broker. Assuming that you're using Mosquito on your home assistant Raspberry Pi, the host is the IP address of your Raspberry Pi or whatever computer you have that's running your MQTT broker. Then you put your MQTT username and password and give this board a unique name where it says topic. Hit save again, restart one more time. I'm gonna use one of these super cool, super cheap passive touch modules. These are the ones I talked about on the live stream that only cost a few cents each. The switch mode to use for these modules is switch mode four. So go to the console and type switch mode one, four. Now your Sonoff should be set up and ready to go. So we've got our electronic locks and now we've got the brains set up to make it a smart lock. So it's time to do the install. The first one we'll do is the surface mount lock. It comes with the electromagnet, a bracket that holds it, and a metal plate that goes on the door. Okay, for this lock, we're gonna put it in the corner of the door, up here, on the outside. We'll mount this part on the door first. The trick to making sure that you get a really secure connection is to not over tighten this metal plate up here. The reason is it has to align perfectly with the electromagnet mechanism and if you tighten it down and it doesn't line up perfectly you'll get a very weak latch. But if you leave it a little bit loose like this, it latches. Ah! Ah! I cannot open it. I will break the door before I open it. Oh, jeez. Yep, that's working. Ah. Beautiful. <laughs> this one works quite a bit differently than the other one. This one replaces part of the door frame. So we're gonna use it out here in the garage because the wife won't let me use it inside. Can't really blame her since it's gonna require cutting some of the door frame out. If it looks bad at the end, it would be pretty bad if it was in the house where she has to see it and remind me how bad it looks. So we'll do it out here. So the best way to think about this one is that there's two locks here. There's the handle lock and there's the magnet lock. If either one of them is unlocked, the door will be openable. On the other hand, if the magnet is locked and the handle is locked, you won't be able to open the door. The only time it's fully secure is if the handle and the magnet are both locked. So this is a situation where if you have a door 
that you want to unlock because somebody forgets their house key or for some other reason you find yourself locked out. If this is locked, you can open this door by unlocking this magnet. Now this is the way I'm using it. This magnet lock actually came with a non-openable plunger. So this piece here wouldn't be attached to the handle or to turning of the handle. In that case, all control over whether the door's locked or not would rely on this magnet lock. So this lock works quite differently than the other one, but both of them are useful in different applications. To make these smart locks maximally useful, we're gonna set them up in, that's right, Home Assistant. In your configuration.yaml file, make a new switch entry for these locks. Mine looks like this. I'll give you a second to write that down. We can also make the icon for these switches look like a lock, either in customize.yaml or in the customize section of your configuration.yaml, you put this. Finally, to put all of your locks in one card and give yourself a button that you can push to turn them all on or off, go to your groups.yaml file and put this. There is a lock component in Home Assistant and I tried using it for these locks, but for some reason it wasn't acting right and I couldn't get it to work. But calling them switches and changing the icon is good enough for me. Well, that's it. For a long time, I've really wanted to make a functional, cheap, smart lock. And I think we did it. There are links to the locks I got from Banggood in the description. I'll be ordering a few more of those for sure. Well, that's it. As always, thanks for watching. Hope that was helpful to you. Until next time, adios.